Hello, this is Ajahn John. Today I am going to continue with, with my discussion about money. You will remember in the last part I talked about one of the disadvantages of money. The fact that we often associate high status with having money and how this is a warped social value warped w-a-r-p-e-d we should not judge or evaluate people according to the amount of money they have we should evaluate them according to more noble characteristics noble such as good behavior and good character. Another problem area concerned with money is the expectation of pleasure. We expect to get pleasure from money. Let me explain this in a little more detail. We assume that the more money we have, the more opportunity we have to gain pleasure so at first we may buy small things like clothes and a small car but as we become richer we may buy big houses helicopters and airplanes and big yachts yachts y a t c h and the general perception in most people's minds is that these possessions will be bring greater and greater pleasure but I think in reality this is not true I think this is one of society's mass hallucinations hallucinations where we so strongly believe that there is a clear connection between money and pleasure and happiness I think many studies have shown that above a certain income level in America maybe around fifty thousand dollars per year happiness tends to plateau plateau or even reduce having more possessions does not bring people more happiness when people are living at or below the poverty line then for sure some small additional amount of money is going to increase their happiness and pleasure but if we plot the relationship between money and pleasure on a graph I think we are not going to see a continually sorry continuing continually continually increasing line the line will be steep at the lower end of the spectrum spectrum but as we move to the higher end where people have more money the line will begin to fall this illusion that money equates to pleasure is a very dangerous one because it leads to disappointment and despair people may work very hard to get money and find when they have it it does not make them happy so we should really challenge this belief we should not accept unthinkingly unthinkingly the idea that happiness increases directly in proportion to the amount of money we have why doesn't happiness increase in direct proportion? Well, I think maybe one reason is people get bored quite quickly. This is, of course, why they are always looking for something new. Most people may well find that the first vehicle they ever owned may be a bicycle when they were a young child brought them the most happiness and far more than their first car or their first helicopter or airplane 
This is because as we have more experience and we get older, it's just not so easy to find exciting things to do. Life inevitably, inevitably becomes boring and we have to accept this and we should not kid ourselves, kid ourselves, K-I-D, that the more money we have, the more pleasure we can get. A secondary problem associated with this high expectation is frivolous spending. Frivolous spending. F-R-I-V-O-L-O-U-S. How often do you see people wandering around shopping malls? They have money in their pocket and they want to spend it on something which is going to make them happy, but they can't find anything. They wander around looking lost and forlorn. Forlorn, F-O-R-E-L-O-R-N. Or maybe in the end they buy something frivolous like a cream cake or an item of clothing which they don't really want. I remember a girlfriend I used to have in London a long time ago and she was a compulsive shopper, compulsive shopper. In her closet she had dozens and dozens of dresses, pairs of shoes, handbags, you name it, she had it. You name it, she had it. But it didn't bring uh, her any great happiness. On the contrary, she always seemed to have a problem choosing what to wear when she went out. So when we do have more money, we often end up just buying stuff which we really don't want, but we are loath to let go, loath to let go, L-O-A-T-H-E of the idea that money must bring you happiness and pleasure. Let's move on now to the final problem which I want to talk about in regard to money. This is about work and how the way we work and what we do is controlled mostly by money. Actually, actually, most of the world lives at or below the poverty line. They don't really have any choice about work. They have to just find any way to make money. And they will be lucky to find even a job which will pay enough, let alone be interesting and rewarding in other ways. The problem with work basically is because we are so concerned with money we forget about other possibly more important factors such as work satisfaction, personal development and the sense of having a real purpose to what you are doing. Most people in the world probably never reach the enviable position, enviable position, where they can choose work which they feel is going to satisfy them intellectually and emotionally. They will usually be forced to take something which gives them the most money because they have so many financial responsibilities already. I think we should never forget that work should be an integral part of our lives. Integral, I-N-T-E-G-R-A-L and should be something which is improving our lives as developing human beings and not only to get us money. People should have the opportunity to choose work which they find exciting, interesting and intellectually rewarding and enable them to continue to develop as individuals in society. 
However, the reality for mo most people is that they are going to be constrained by financial criteria which will lead them in most cases to make decisions based primarily primarily upon financial rewards. What would human work look like if we did not have money involved at all? I would suspect that we would have far more artists, scientists, scientists, designers, and people involved in creative imagination. People would be trying to do things which they want to be fulfilling and interesting. Imagine you had plenty of money, so you did not have to worry about how much money you got from your work. Would you continue to do the same job? Or would you do something completely different? Or would you maybe change the way in which you work? I'm sure you can all see ways in which you would like to change your work but are constrained by financial limitations. I also suspect that a lot of people, if they had enough money, would not do the work they do now. Jobs like working in shops, factories, selling food in the streets, I don't think people really get much pleasure and human development from this kind of job. I think they would probably find some other way to use their time. So to sum up the points I have made, firstly money is an extremely useful tool. It can give us the opportunity to buy anything we want and also give us the freedom not to have to work. When we have sufficient money, we can then choose to do what we want in our lives. However, money has become too important to people and is associated with what I would call wrong ideas. We think having a great deal of money gives us status and importance in society and we think it gives us more and more pleasure. Both of these ideas are only sustainable as long as you can delude yourself. Delude yourself. D-E-L-U-D-E. -E. If you come to your senses, come to your senses you will realize that money actually has a fairly minor part in your life and your activities should be determined by ever far more important criteria. Have you seen the Will Smith movie I Am Legend? I Am Legend. In this movie he is possibly the last human being alive on the earth. Just him and a whole bunch of vampire-like creatures. Vampire-like creatures. Society has fallen apart, I think, from some kind of disease. And he spends each day looking for food. He goes around shops and shopping areas, looking into shops for canned food, anything valuable, but he totally ignores the banks. The banks full of paper money are totally useless to him. The paper money would only be good for making a bonfire. You could say that he has discovered the important things in life. Food, survival, looking after his dog and searching for other human beings. I think these Last Man on Earth movies Last Man on Earth movies are a good way to wake us up wake us up to what is really important. That's the end of this talk. Goodbye for now.